Hello, this is John Paul Regan. I'm here with UFC President Dana White. We're coming to you from the UFC 120 post fight press conference here in London in the UK. Dana, first of all, could you start by giving us your, your overall thoughts on the event? That was a good card. You know, I really like the uh, really good prelims. We had a couple of yeah, yeah fights, and then uh, and then the co-main and the main killed it. So it was a good night. That was a card. It took quite a lot of criticism at first when it was first announced, and uh, it turned out to be a great night of fights. And it also turned out to be your highest grossing record setting event, I think, in the UK and Europe. If you listen to the idiots on the internet, we wouldn't even be here right now. You know what I mean? So I, listen, whenever people talk about all oh, this fight, they, first of all, you can't say a fight sucks until the fight's over. You know, those are people, pe people that say stupid shit like that are just, uh, they're either, uh, they have an agenda, or they're just goofballs. They're not fans anyway. If you're a fight fan, you know, you go to a fight, and then you determine whether the fight sucked or not. You got, there was, I think it was eight British guys on the card, and um, obviously British guys are going to be a ticket seller in the UK, but then I think there was, was five UK losses and three wins. So does that hurt your momentum going forward in the UK? Does it make any difference at all? No, it doesn't at all. The, the reality is, the, the great thing about this sport is, we get guys from all over the world to fight on the cards. So guess what? There's going to be some guys from the UK that are great and that are going to go on to do good things. And there's going to be guys that will make it almost there. Some guys won't make it at all. And there's people like that all over the world. This is a global sport with you know, fighters from everywhere. And you know, Every time we come into the UK and we bring in they like people from other countries. BJ Penn got a crazy uh, ovation here. Randy Couture gets an ovation here all the time. It's, uh, they don't just like what? They're going to get behind their countrymen when they fight. And that's a cool thing. It's not a bad thing. We're obliged to ask, we get emails every day, Scotland, Ireland, everywhere in the UK. Next year we've heard you're looking at an expansion program, you're going to be doing a smaller series of fight night events, perhaps around the UK, maybe four to six events. Can you tell us anything about that? We're working on it. All that stuff's a work in progress. Basically what we're doing right now is uh, there's so much demand everywhere, all over the world. You know, We're trying to figure out how to get it there and uh, not lose you know, the quality of fights. Does it affect, like you said something in the press conference about people saying you're doing too many shows and you're achieving saturation, does it not affect like, pay-per-view revenues and sales perhaps if you've got so many cards on? No, man. As long as you get, it's like saying, is there too much soccer? You know, is there too much soccer? No, if, you, if there's great matchups, people want to see it. What I deal with are hardcore fight fans. When you're a hardcore fight fan, you can't watch enough good fights. You know what I mean? And there's going to be some fights that are free, some that are pay-per-view. Um, I, and I think that's one of the things that, that uh, the fans appreciate and like, that they get some free ones other than pay-per-views. Okay, last couple of questions. You mentioned expansion as well. You've talked about you've opened an office in China. You're talking about India. Now, they've got massive populations and massive young male populations, but they're not the first countries I'd associate with like a high level of disposable income. But have you done sort of research that suggested that India is wide open for the UFC or China is wide open for it? Yeah, every country is wide open for it. If, if, if you're a human being, fighting's in your DNA. You get it and you like it. Everybody gets it and everybody likes it. Um, you know, in India they have 300 million males, 18 to 34. That's more than people that are that, than in the United States. People, period. And, uh, you know, everybody likes fighting. Everybody. We've actually just done an article about India, uh, mixed martial arts. It's very, very young the sport of There's only a couple of teams in the country. Mixed martial arts doesn't really exist in any mainstream context. How do you go about breaking the country? It was very young when I came here to England, too, and there were no gyms here. I, there was like one jujitsu place in London. That was it. And look at it now. It, 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 it turns around and it's going to grow fast. And the reality is, mixed martial arts is the new martial art. This is what kids are going to take growing up. This is what women and men take that want to get into martial arts. Um, it's going everywhere. And what happens is once we go in and secure a television deal, then we go in and, and we do a live event. That live event sets off the what I call the virus, man, and affects everybody with the virus. Uh, last two questions. First of all, Carlos Condit just told the press conference that he wouldn't necessarily turn down a fight with his teammate, Charles St. Pierre. Uh, I don't know whether he meant it was for the title or just in general. Um, could you talk a little bit about that? Obviously, that's an attitude. You really want to see more and more fighters coming out with, right? Yeah, I, I love that. I respect that. That's the way it's supposed to be. You know, when uh, when you're an up-and-coming fighter, it doesn't matter what camp you're from, who you trained with, who your buddy is. It's not personal. It's business. And, and you should always be looking to test yourself and see if you're the best fighter in the world. You know, and, and we have problems with that out of the Jackson camp and AKA. And it drives me nuts. So uh, it's refreshing to hear a kid like Carlos Conn say, love George St. Pierre. He's a great guy, but I'd love to have his title, and, I, and I'd fight him. 
how did it decide which corner Greg Jackson goes in? Well, you know what? I guarantee you, George St. Pierre respects that too. You think George St. Pierre is going to say, you know, Carlos shouldn't want to fight me because we're from the same camp? Hell no. George St. Pierre will fight Carlos Condit. And they can figure out the politics in the gym. Who's going to corner who? Or if one guy, you know, GSP maybe he trains up in uh, in uh, Montreal and some of the guys from that camp go up with him and some of the guys stay in New Mexico. I mean, come on. We're all big boys. We're, we're fucking grown-ups here. We can figure this out, right? Very last question, Michael Bisping. When he's fight tonight, he's been talking about a title shot. Where does he win tonight, please? Yeah, he, you know, he went in tonight against a very tough, durable guy, man. And I knew he was going to be dangerous, and he got hit with that big shot, you know, as soon as the bell rang. And, uh, you know, I think Michael kept his composure. I think uh, he kept his head together after he got hit with the big shot. Worked. I, I thought he looked great tonight. So it definitely puts him back in the mix. So he'll fight somebody in the top five, and we'll see what happens. He's back on his way toward uh, a title shot. Dana White, thanks very much for talking to us. We appreciate your time. Thank you.